All right, folks, on to the second uh, portion, the lesson here. And uh, again, no excuses for tomorrow. I, I know this is, it's not a hard uh, lesson here. Just want to make sure you pay attention and, and we're going to prove some things. So I know that some of you um, struggle with that a little bit, but just hang with me and I think you'll see what we're, what we're looking for. So in, in looking at uh, the first part, it says five ways to prove quadrilateral, a, pro, a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Okay, um, I'm going to work walk you through those five ways. Now, the very first way, there's no proof needed. Okay, what is a quadrilateral or a parallelogram? We talked about it the other day. It is a quadrilateral whose both sides are going to be parallel. Okay, so what's the number one way to prove that you have a parallelogram? Well, if you have both pairs of opposite sides that are parallel. Okay, so number one. Okay, by definition of a parallelogram, that's what we have. Okay, nothing difficult about that, just pretty straightforward. Now starting at number two, there's some things that we have to prove. And so taking a look at this next part, number two, it says here that if both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. Now you may be thinking to yourself, you know what, we studied this yesterday. We said if we have a parallelogram, then both sides have, both pairs of opposite sides have to be congruent. Well today we're looking at the converse of that. This is the backwards way of looking at it and we're seeing if it's still true. Okay. So this time, we're given both pairs of opposite sides are congruent, do we have a parallelogram? Well, as I look at this, you know, I hope that you guys can see that, that you have the reflexive property here that's going to be congruent between the two triangles there. That makes the triangles congruent by what reason? Side, 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 right? Okay. And if the triangles are congruent by side, 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 then I would know that this angle right here its corresponding angle would be this one down here, okay? And this angle right here, its corresponding angle would be congruent to this one up here, okay? Um, to, to make sure that that makes sense to you, uh, maybe we should back up a little bit and actually write this out. Triangle ABC is congruent to triangle CDA. And so when we look at angle A from the first triangle, that's going to correspond with angle C from the second triangle. We see that right there, here and here. And then angle A from the second triangle uh, corresponds with angle C from the first triangle. Okay, so, so we have those angles congruent. Now why is that necessary in this proof right here? Well, if we have alternate two angles that are congruent, what do we then know? Well, lines have to be parallel. So I could go ahead and say that this line here, because of this angle, and this line here, because of this angle, have to be parallel to each other by the converse of the alternate interior angles theorem. It's, the, it's the, the, the switch of it, okay? If the alternate interior angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel, okay? The same thing's true with these two. If these two pairs of alternate interior angles are congruent, then this line would have to be con uh, parallel to that line, okay? But again, what did we start with? We started with both pairs of opposite sides being congruent. Now, moving on to number three, if we go ahead and take a look at that one, this one says both pairs of opposite angles are congruent, okay? So what I would encourage you to do is something like this. We don't know that we have a parallelogram. So I'm just gonna take a random angle measurement here for A. If I go ahead and show that A is, let's say, 50 degrees, okay? Doesn't matter what the degree measurement is, just plugging in a random ang angle measurement. I know that this one's also 50 degrees, okay? To find the other two angles, I'm gonna think about it this way. I'm gonna go ahead and say that the sum of these four angles has to be 360 degrees. If I go ahead and take away the two angles that are already there, 50, and 50, what's left over is angle B and angle D. Well, since both these angles are the same measure, I'm gonna divide both of them by two, and that'll give me each one of them individually. So if I do that, let's see here, 360 minus 100 is 260 divided by two, that's 130. So this angle here and this angle here, they're both 130, okay? Now, this is beneficial to us, why? 
because now we have consecutive interior angles that are supplementary. And if that's true, then here's our transversal, and these two lines would have to be parallel. And here we have consecutive interior angles that are supplementary. And so this is my transversal. These lines have to be parallel, okay? And so in the end, I should probably mark it with two. In the end, we have a parallelogram. So again, if both pairs of opposite angles are congruent, all right? Very similar to yesterday, right? Okay? We're just looking at it from the opposite perspective. Now, in looking at number four, if the diagonals bisect each other, okay? Again, we looked at that yesterday. But let's talk about this. Does that lead us back to the fact that we have a parallelogram? Well, like yesterday, it doesn't matter which pair of triangles I look at, these two or these two, we're going to have congruent triangles. So let's just look at the top and bottom triangles. I know if I go ahead and mark the vertical angles congruent, if I can, there you go. If I mark those congruent, the top and bottom triangles are going to be congruent by side angle side. Well, if they're congruent by side angle side, let me just go ahead and write this out. If I do triangle BEC is congruent to triangle, that'd be DEA, okay? If we notice, angle ECB would be congruent to angle EAD. So if I look at that, ECB, EAD, okay? By CPCTC. Now, what does that prove? Well, in that process there, what I then know, these alternate two angles are congruent. That makes this line parallel to that line right there. Okay? Now, I, I didn't realize this uh, when I first started this proof here. I do actually have to prove these two triangles congruent as well. Okay? Because right now, I can't prove this line parallel to this one. Because nothing from this triangle or this triangle really touches or influences those lines right there. So what I'm going to do is, again, I'm going to mark the vertical angles here, congruent. And again, those triangles are congruent by side angle side. So I'll go ahead and show triangle, um, let's do BEA, is congruent to triangle BEA, that would be DEC. Okay, again, both those are by side angle side. And so um, here, I could either take angle EAB, or I could do e, um, EBA, sorry, or EAB. I'm going to take EBA and EDC. Those two have to be congruent. So EBA and EDC. Well, again, that's by CPCTC, and I think we can see now with alternate two angles congruent, this line and this line have to be parallel to each other, okay? So what do we have? We now have a parallelogram, okay? So the diagonals bisecting each other lead us back to the fact that we have uh, a parallelogram there. All right, let's move on to the very last way to prove triangles congruent, and I've started this one, okay? And so as we look at this, this is the one that a lot of people forget. People don't forget the fact that if both pairs of opposite sides are parallel, we have a parallelogram. That's basic. People don't forget if we have both pairs of opposite angles congruent, both pairs of opposite sides congruent, um, or the fact that diagonals bisect each other. That, those are all straightforward. The one that a lot of people forget is this one right here. If one pair of opposite sides are both parallel and congruent. So as I look at this, Here's why this ends up being a parallelogram. Well, we, we look at the two triangles, we have the reflective property in play, okay? We also look at the two triangles with parallel lines, we have alternate interior angles in play here as well, okay? So when I look at those two triangles, do we have current triangles? And we do, by side angle side. So if those two triangles are congruent by side angle side, let me write this out. Triangle, let's do ABC, is congruent to triangle CDA, okay? And, and if I'm looking at angle BAC, this angle right here, 
if I look at the other triangle, CDA, sorry, I did that wrong, DCA, well, those have to be congruent because they correspond, right? So by CP, CTC, those two angles are congruent. If those angles are congruent, well, those are alternate two angles. They influence these lines right here. Those lines have to be parallel. So in the end, again, we have a parallelogram, both pairs of opposite sides being parallel. Okay. So what I'd like you to do, what I'd like to do with you guys, actually, is take a look at your packet now. And there's a couple of things from the packet that I'd like to look at with you guys, and then we'll make the assignment for tonight. So looking here, um, you can see the five ways to prove triangles are going to be a parallelogram. Sorry, quadrilaterals are going to be parallelogram. Okay. Um, let me go down here. Here's the first part. Determine whether the quadrilateral is a parallelogram and justify your answer. So as I look at number one, uh, the thing that sticks out to me is this. Actually, let's do number two first. It's more straightforward. What sticks out to me in number two is the fact that this side here is congruent to that side there, and the fact that these two sides are congruent to each other. Okay. So what do we have there? Well, we know we have both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. Does that lead to a parallelogram? And we do. So I want you to write this down. Um, number two, is it a parallelogram? I'm going to put it, uh, this is a parallelogram because both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. Okay? I would write it down, but my board still isn't working very good, so it, it wouldn't look real nice. But again, this is a parallelogram because both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. As I look at number one, what I see here is this. I know that this side here is congruent to this side here. What I also know is this. This angle and this angle, they're consecutive into here. That was nice. Undo that. Okay. These two angles are consecutive into here. And so what that means is this. Okay. This line right here is the transversal. And since they're supplementary, this line right here and this line right here have to be parallel to each other. Okay? When consecutive interior angles are congruent, lines are going to be parallel. Um, that would be the converse of the consecutive interior angles theorem. Okay? So what do we have right now? Well, we've got one pair of opposite sides that's both parallel and congruent. So do we have a parallelogram? And the answer is yes. So again, I would put down, this is a parallelogram because one pair of opposite sides are both parallel and congruent. Okay? Now looking at number three, what do we have here? Well, we've got one pair of opposite sides that are congruent, and we have one pair of opposite angles are congruent. Okay? If you look up the five ways to prove, triangle, or prove a quadrilateral as a parallelogram, um, you have to have both pairs of opposite sides congruent. We don't have that. You have to have both pairs of opposite angles congruent. We don't have that. You have to have one pair of opposite sides both congruent and parallel. We don't have that. And so what I would put down for number three is something like this. I would say, no, we cannot conclude this is a parallelogram because either A, there's not enough information, or because, and I would list one of those three ways that we just said. We don't know that both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. We don't know that both pairs of opposite angles are congruent. Or we don't know that one pair of opposite sides are both parallel and congruent. Okay? So again, we're, we're providing a justification for what we have there. All right, now, I want you to flip over to the back side. Um, we're actually going to skip the back side here because uh, I think that it's pretty much self-explanatory, so I'm going to let you guys work on that here in just a little bit. And we're going to go through, you can read down through this justification right here. But I want to look at number one with you guys right here, okay? This is kind of a, a coordinate plane proof. So you're going to take what we know to be true, and we're going to apply it to the coordinate plane and see if we can prove anything. So in, in looking at this figure right here, I'm going to go ahead and graph this. Negative 2, 4. There is point, 
I can make it very well. Again, my board's not working real well. Point F. Um, 4, 2, over 4, up 2. There we go. And that is G. Okay, H is at 4, negative 2. H and J is at 2, negative 2, negative 1. J. Okay. Now, as you look at this shape, some of you may be looking at it and be like, I can tell this is definitely a parallelogram or definitely not. It doesn't really matter because we have to prove it, right? And they want us to use the midpoint formula. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, okay, how am I going to use the midpoint formula to prove that this is or is not a parallelogram? Well, here's how we're going to do that. Um, if I go ahead and draw on the diagonals, and feel free to use a straight edge at the front of the classroom, or if you have one, you go ahead and draw that in. Okay. What we're going to do here is this. Pay close attention to this next part because this is the key to the problem. If the midpoint of FH is the same value as the midpoint of JG, then we know the diagonals bisect each other. And if the diagonals bisect each other, we have a parallelogram. If we don't, then we don't have a parallelogram. Okay? So the, the midpoint formula, if you remember, is this. It's the sum of the x's divided by 2. I like to say the average of the x's and the sum of the y's divided by 2, or the average of the y values, okay? So if I take FH, okay, the midpoint right here, the midpoint of FH, we have 4 to negative 2. So if I add 4 to negative 2, that gives me 2 divided by 2, which is 1. Yeah, uh, I did the y values first. I don't know why I did that. I must have been thinking slope. Okay, well, let's take the x values, sorry. So negative 2 and positive 4, well, that gives me 2 divided by 2, which is 1. 4 plus negative 2 is going to give me 2 divided by 2, which is 1. Okay, so this point right here, 1, 1, is the midpoint of FH. Okay. Now, my picture's not drawn very accurately, but it doesn't look like that's going to be the midpoint of JG. Let's see. So JG, the midpoint of JG, if we add those together, um, negative 2 plus 4 gives me 2 divided by 2 is 1. And if we do, uh, what I do? Negative 2 plus 4, so negative 1 plus 2 gives me... 1 divided by 2, which is 1 half. Okay, so 1, 1 and a half. Okay, are those two points the same point? No. Okay, so every time you do a coordinate proof, remember you have to have a summary statement. So I would write something like this down. Um, since the midpoints of the diagonals are not the same, we know that the diagonals don't bisect each other, therefore, quadrilateral FGHJ is not a parallelogram, okay? So, uh, to finish things off, folks, I want you to finish up the rest of that packet there, and I would like you to do these problems for tomorrow. I'd like you to do, from page 448, numbers 18 to 24 even, and then 35 and 36, okay? I will be checking that tomorrow, so... I appreciate your attention, uh, and I, you know, no excuses tomorrow. Uh, if there's a problem that you don't understand, I completely understand that. Don't come and tell me you don't know, understand the lesson, because uh, you have a lot of resources, including, I believe, Mr. Rader is going to make himself available after school in the math lab in his room. You can go talk to him about that. So, have a great night, folks. I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye.